Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be being scarce frustrates women, but makes them want you more. Well, I've got to email this guy. He says he's been following me for about five or six years, and he says he's listened to 3% Man at least 15 times or more. And he believes he has a good grip on the material in general, but he's got a situation with his girlfriend that he's been dating for almost a year. He's 21, so he's a young guy, and the woman is much older than him. She's 28. I'm sure there's a lot of guys in the comments that will have an opinion about that. But his problem is, is things have been going really well up until last month or so, and he noticed that she doesn't call as much, she doesn't text as much. She's not as interested in sex, and she just doesn't have the same level of enthusiasm that she once did. And so what he did was he started matching and mirroring her lack of effort and interest and enthusiasm. And so what's interesting is that she noticed it, and then when they got together the next time, she complained that they were kind of drifting apart or they weren't in contact very often. And so what he made the mistake of doing was misinterpreting what he's she said to mean that he step, needs to start pursuing her more because he was of the mind am, am i being too much of a cold fish am i pursuing too much and so he takes advice from his girlfriend on what she says she wants he does it he starts calling and texting more and nothing changes and what he misinterpreted, what, and you'll see as I go through the email, was all she was really trying to say was that she noticed. She noticed he hasn't been as attentive, hasn't expressed as much enthusiasm. And so what she did was complain about it. He discussed it. And because the idea is that you, it's a scientific fact that women are more attracted to men whose feelings are unclear. You get 100 women in a room and you ask them that, and go, oh, no, it's got to be 50-50. You don't know what you're talking about. You should talk to us women about that. So here's a case in point. Here's a guy that did exactly what his girlfriend told him that she needed. He does it, and it has no effect on her feelings towards him. She noticed she could feel that, but where he made the mistake of pursuing her when he should have just kept doing what he was doing because the idea – is you want a you're supposed to go slightly slower than she is and somewhere along the lines over the last couple months he has communicated and done things obviously that communicates that he's more into her than she is in to him and so we backed off for a little bit she said she didn't like it and then he went back to pursuing more like she said she wanted and it had no effect on her interest she still was just blasé towards him. And so what he should have done is he should have resisted the urge to call and text more and just said, well, if you missed me, if you're disappointed we haven't been talking as much, is something wrong with your phone? Why didn't you pick it up and text me? Why didn't you call me if you missed me? Instead of getting upset and, in essence, giving me the silent treatment and, and being mad at me and not communicating... It's like, if you miss me, why don't you pick up the phone and call me? I don't understand that. Why would you do that? Because remember, I discussed this in the book. Whoever's asking the questions is the one that's running the relationship. And, and lately, I've seen a lot of emails from guys, especially when they start communicating with their girl, especially if she communicates something he's uncomfortable with or doesn't know how to handle, the guys will quickly change the subject and just brush it under the rug and pretend everything's fine. But they don't, they don't get to the root of the issue. The woman doesn't feel heard and understood. And in this case, we're bottom lining her, we should be bottom lining her actions and look at the fact that she's not making the effort, she's not calling, she's not texting. She noticed that he backed off, but it did influence her behavior because he just, he's 21. So he hasn't been through this enough times to understand how to handle it properly. <clears throat> and his girl may be a little structured and she may be being a little difficult as well so he says hi coach a big fan of your work i've been following for five to six years and i've read and listened to the book well over 15 times i feel like i have a good grip on the material in general but i am currently in a position that i am finding hard to navigate i'm 21 and i've been dating a 28 year old girl for almost a year 
Things have been going great overall, but lately I feel like she has been less excited to see me, less keen for sex, and less communicative. So the bottom line is, is that she's putting in less effort. She's got less enthusiasm. And all that means is that they've just spent a lot of time together and she's starting to take him for granted. And so typically when you notice that, you match and mirror the behavior because you're looking for changed behavior. You're looking for enthusiasm. And so he misinterprets her complaints as that that's going to fix the enthusiasm. He does what she says she wanted, and it has no change on her, which you'll see. As you suggest, I reciprocated her interest level and showed less intent from my side. Without saying much, I also spent a bit more time apart to give her the space to miss me. But when I saw her, honestly, she just seemed to be a little moody. So whether you realize it or not, you're getting the desired response. She's moody. And if she's moody and cranky, and we're assuming it's just not because it's that time of the month, but he obviously asked her, hey, what's going on? And so the reason that she's moody is she noticed. And remember, moodiness, angriness, irritation, what is always behind that? Fear. Fear of loss, fear that he doesn't care, that kind of thing. And so his backing off elicited the feelings that he wanted, but he Instead of continuing on with the same path and telling her that she needs to reach out more, instead of just not saying anything, he interprets it as, oh, I have to do more, which is the illusion of action. So he says, when I asked her to communicate with me how she was really feeling, she said eventually she felt like I wasn't reaching out enough and she was sad that our communication throughout the day had slowed down. She said she was... She said she was... Wondering if I have to accept this level of communication as the new normal for us. Instead of reaching out to me more like I was thinking she would, she seemed to back off when I did. Well, what that shows you is that she didn't do anything. But the, she noticed you backing off. She noticed your inaction. And that's why you do it. And then what you should have said to her was... Well, if you're not happy with the level of communication, why don't you call me more? Why don't you text me more? Why is it all on me to make all of the effort? I've noticed lately that you don't call as much, you don't text as much, and even when we get together, you don't seem as excited to be together. And I want to spend my time with you when you're excited to see me. And when you act like you've got better things to be doing or you're not really that excited to be there, that doesn't make me want to jump through my butt and spend more time with you. That just makes me think... Oh, maybe I should go see my mom, see my family. Maybe she's got things going on she needs to take care of and leave it at that. But you should have told her because what she's basically doing is she's noticing that you're not communicating as much and she complains to you when in reality she's the one not reaching out. Remember, no one will ever do or say anything to you that isn't a direct reflection of how they feel about themselves in a moment. Remember, she said she was wondering if she has to accept this level of communication as the new normal. So in other words, she is projecting the fact that she knows she's not communicating as much. And she throws it in your lap as if it's all your fault, which, I mean, at the end of the day, you're supposed to be the leader in the relationship. So women are naturally going to blame us for everything because we're supposed to be the leaders. And the buck stops with the leader. That's just the way it is. Guys that bitch about that and complain about that, it's... You know, that's why they have problems and that's why they're incels typically. And they get no action with women. That's why they're so angry and pissed off at them. Because women don't like them, they don't feel comfortable around them, and they don't respect them. Which is, you know, an absolute epidemic in the red pill community. So he said, instead of reaching out to me more like I was thinking she would, she seemed to back off when I did. Well, she noticed that you had backed off and she still did nothing. Because the idea is you want her to get frustrated that things aren't moving along as quickly. And so what's happening is she is getting frustrated, but you made the mistake of assuming that meant to pursue more. Because notice what happens here. He says, honestly, I'm confused because since then I increased the amount I'm reaching out to her and it doesn't seem that it has helped her attraction level. Exactly. All she was doing was complaining that she noticed that you hadn't put as much effort in and she was projecting and blaming you for her lack of effort and interest. When in reality, as you should recognize it, you're going faster than she is. And so therefore, you need to slow down to the point where 
she's going faster than you are. And that's what gets her frustrated. That's what gets a woman to make the extra effort because it's a scientific fact that women are more attracted to men whose feelings are unclear. And so what you did was to make your feelings more clear and you didn't get rewarded for it. You gave her more of an already too abundant resource in her life, which is you. And so therefore she continues to take you for granted. She still doesn't seem too excited to see me or call me as much as she used to. I'm finding it hard to figure out if I should be reaching out more or continuing to back off and let her come to me. Well, at this point in the relationship, if you've been dating for almost a year, she should be doing 95%, maybe even 99 or 100% of the pursuing. And if you're, you're doing more than 20 to 30% of it, it's too much. He didn't allude to how much he's reaching out. But the bottom line is he's giving her too much time, too much attention. They're obviously spending time to, too much time together. And he's communicating to her that he likes her way more than she likes him. And when a woman senses that, she always backs off. That's just the way it is. Because what's happening is you're communicating that she has all power. And women don't want the power in a relationship, even though most of them go, it's Shabbat 50, 50. They don't want power. They want to be unsure. They want to seek your attention. They like you more if they have to chase you. Most women will say, I disagree with that, Corey. That's not true. But, I mean, here's another case where this guy did exactly what she said she was missing. And what happened? It had no effect on her feelings. That's the important thing. It had an effect on her feelings when he backed off. And instead of letting her be present with that feeling and encouraging her to reach out to him instead of just holding back, it's like, well, babe, if you missed me, why didn't you text me? Why didn't you call me? Why are you holding back on purpose? You're complaining that we don't talk as much, and yet here you are holding back on purpose and not reaching out to me when you miss me. I, I don't know. Why would you do that? Remember, whoever is asking the questions is the one running the conversation. He says, I'm not sure if it's an insecurity of hers, but it seems like when I back off, no matter how high her interest, she won't let herself be enamored in her emotions and chase after me. Well, that's your rationalization. If you look at her actions, which are the only thing that matter, it shows that she's not feeling the same way. You even gave her more of what she said she wanted, and it had no effect. It seems like when I back off, she doesn't want to be the one displaying all the interest and does the same. I'm a bit stuck on what to do and would really love your advice. Well, like I said, the the appropriate response is to back off. And when she complains, encourage her to reach out more and call her out on the fact that she's holding back and complaining about, well, if you don't think we're talking enough, why are you not reaching out to me and communicating this? I'm not a mind reader. How am I supposed to know this? I mean, last time I checked, I didn't see any smoke signals coming from your, your backyard. So it's like, how am I supposed to know? If you want to see me more, why don't you call me or text me more? Why is it all on me to make the effort? How about you make more of an effort? Because I have noticed that when we are together, you don't have the same enthusiasm. You don't make the same effort. You don't call as much and you don't text as much. The enthusiasm is just not there. So if I hang out with you and I make plans for a nice date and you act like you're doing me a favor to be there or you act like your mind's preoccupied and you'd rather be somewhere else, it's like, well, maybe you need some time to yourself. Maybe you need to go hang out with some of your friends or hang out with your family or whatever. And then call me when you miss me terribly. It takes two to tango. And if you, if you don't like the distance between us, you should do something about that. I don't have a problem with things the way they are, but you say you are, have a problem with it. So why don't you do something to fix something you're not happy with? Those are the kinds of conversations you should be having with her so follow the book dude don't be taking advice because you did what she said she wanted and it had the opposite effect and so scarcity creates value you are too abundant you're seeking her attention and validation way too much the power is flipped in your relationship that's what happened here and on top of that you're second guessing yourself and going against the book's principles and when you go against the book's principles you should not be surprised that it had no effect on her interest. It just kept it flatlined. In other words, she doesn't fear losing you because women have to be unsure of where they stand with you and that's what causes them to reach out. Now, in this case, 
she it looks like she's purposely holding back, but he only did it for like one week. So he really didn't give it the time. And plus, he didn't handle it properly when she brought it up. So this is part of being able to communicate effectively. And especially in this case, where she's trying to point the finger and blame you for something that she's actually guilty of doing, you got to call her out on it. And you got to point that out to her. It's like, well, why don't you feel comfortable enough to call me or text me? We've been together for a year. If you're missing me and you don't feel like we talk enough or communicate enough or see each other enough, why don't you text that to me? Why don't you call me? Why don't you say I miss you? I want to see you. That's what normal girls do. What's going on? Why are you holding back? Ask her those kinds of questions. So if you got a question or challenge you'd like to get my help with, go to understandingrelationships.com, click the products tab at the top of your screen, and book a coaching session with yours truly. Until next time, I will talk to you soon. (laughs) 